Welcome back to the second part of lecture six. In the first part, we were just talking about non-homogeneous uh, homogeneous system of linear equations. Now we want to talk a little bit about non-homogeneous systems of linear equations. And as you can expect from the name, a system of linear equations is non-homogeneous if the matrix equation looks like ax equals b, where the b is not equal to zero. The difference between homogeneous and non-homogeneous is what the matrix equation is equal to. So let's look at the example that follows. Say that we want to find all solutions to this particular non-homogeneous system, where our matrix A is as follows, 1, 3, minus 2, minus 2, minus 5, 4, minus 1, 2, and 2. And this is my vector B that I want it equal to, 1, 2, and 19. You'll notice that this matrix A is the, actually the same matrix A that we had previous in the previous example. So we know how to solve this. We want to find all solutions. This is going back to day one. And I'll just write out some of the steps. Uh, if you row reduce it, and I'm again, I'm skipping steps here since I, I think you're starting to feel comfortable doing some of these calculations. When I put it into echelon form, I get this shape right here, and I see that I have a free, vari a free variable, and I don't end up a case where a pivot is in this spot right here, so I know that there exists a solution. And let me take it one step further and put it into reduced row echelon form. So if I do that, I end up with 1, 0, minus 2, minus 11, 0, 1, 0, 4, and in the bottom row I have all zeros. Okay, so this is row reduced echelon form of the augmented matrix. Now this matrix in this particular form tells me some very useful information. It tells me that x1 and x2 are basic and x3 is a free variable. So the x1 and x2 are, are basic variables. Maybe I'll put that in there so your notes are complete and x3 is a free variable. Now, because we've put the matrix into row reduced echelon form, we can write each of the basic variables in terms of the free variable. So describe the basic variables in terms of the free variables. And what we have is that x1 is going to be equal to minus 11 plus 2x3. x2 is always going to be equal to 4. And x3 is our free variable. So it's always going to be equal to x3. So this allows us to describe all solutions to our matrix equation. And let's do that over here. So as a vector solution, any solution will have the form, a hollering form. So we figured out what x1 was in terms of the free variables, right? It was minus 11 plus 2x3. x2 is always 4, and x3 is always x3. Now what we want to do is take this vector here and split it into parts. We want to split it into a vector that contains the free variable and a vector that doesn't contain any free variables. So it's probably easier to illustrate by example. So we would have 2x3. There is no x3 in this uh, coordinate. And there is an x3 in this spot. And I can rewrite this as plus, minus 11, 4, and 0. There's, there's no uh, other number here except for the x3. Here we have the 2x3 minus 11. And I can take this one step further, and I can factor out the x3. And so I have 2, 0, 1, plus, minus 11, 4, 0, where x3 is any real number. So this gives me a complete description of all solutions to my non-homogeneous system. And just as a little, uh, just a little notation here, what we can do to make things a little tighter is we can let p be the vector minus 11, 4, 0. And we can let v be the vector 
0.2201. So the solution has the following form. X can be written as P plus C times V with C any real number because we're taking any multiple of, of the vector 201 and we're adding the vector minus 11 for 0 to it. 0 to the to the first guy okay and this this actually has a name right this is called the para, parametric equa equation of our or the parametric form for our solution now let's stare sit and stare at this for a second and you should notice that we've seen part of this before if we look at this guy right here x3 times 201 we go back a couple pages to my solutions to the homogeneous system, I actually saw the exact same three, x3 times the vector 201. So we get the following thing that I want you to observe before we take a break is we were looking at a non-homogeneous system of equations we described all of the solutions, but somehow the solutions are also capturing some information about solutions to the homogeneous system of equations. So in the next part of the lecture, we wanna kind of relate these two ideas together. How are the solutions to the homogeneous system related to the non-homogeneous system and vice versa?